Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Leader of the Official Opposition, Honorable John Steinazen, Mr. President, today I stand in this honor's house representing South African citizens from all corners of our country. Mr. President, I listened to your speech last week. I wondered which country were you talking about. On the 23rd of February 2020, you were in Standerton. You were seen by members of the community following a number of motions that were brought to this house by the Democratic Alliance, bringing to your government's attention the horrible living conditions they are subjected to. Our people, as you would refer to them, were very excited. Some even posted pictures posing with you on their social media platforms, captioned, The New Dawn. Do you know what brought that excitement? Because, like many South Africans from east to west, north to south, living under ANC-led municipalities, they thought their pleas have finally been heard. That just maybe, after seeing with your own eyes the horrible living conditions they are subjected to, you will finally take action against those responsible for their misery. Little did they know that you came all the way just to pose for pictures. You drove over the deep potholes in every street of Standardton, and yet you posed for pictures. Gogo Mutlowung passed away in her house. Because of the rain, the ambulance couldn't drive on the wet, slippery road in Roy Copen, and paramedics refused to go into her house. Yet you posed for pictures. The farmers of Yonkers Dam do not have access to a reliable electricity supply, which places their lives at risk, and the municipality is refusing to give them permission to get electricity direct from ESCOM. And yet, you pose for pictures. Liqua municipality is amongst top 10 municipality culprits not paying ESCOM debt, and one of the top 10 worst performing municipalities. And yet, you chose to pose for pictures. People of Umkanyagu, the KZN, do not have access to water, and your government wants to build smart uh, cities. Is your government uh, paying to... Please. Uh, go ahead, honorable member. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. People of Umkanyagu, the in the KZN, do not have access to water, and your government wants to build smart cities. Is your government planning to move along with all these plans and leave everyone behind? In your speech, you said, I quote, progress is being made on several major water infrastructure projects, close quote, while you are preparing for your smart city, be reminded today that the people of Umkanyagu, they are drinking water from the river with the animals while they walk past the Echozini Dam every day. This is the government you're presiding over. You have also mentioned that you have launched two major human settlement projects that will house 68,000 households. Yet you said nothing about the embarrassing tin share costing government 2.4 million launched by Premier Stan Matabata in Limpopo. To date, he remains a premier. When you took office, you told South Africans that you are bringing the new dawn. Unfortunately, in this new dawn, the sun does not rise, but it stays in dawn. Let me tell you about the DA difference. A DA-led government would form a Ministry of Department of Special Planning and Service Delivery. This new ministry and department would have multifaceted mandates. It would firstly be tasked with providing a range of adequate housing opportunities to those who are unable to do so for themselves. Secondly, it would be charged with recontextualizing the way our cities work using modern special design that promotes integration and inclusivity. This would also entail creating spaces within our cities, including public spaces, which deconstruct apartheid city planning. Finally, ensuring improved service delivery, including access to and quality water and sanitation, that would be central mandate of the ministry. Mr. President, not so long ago, you summoned us to a joint sitting and promised that six billion will be reprioritized for emergency action plan against gender-based violence. You further announced to set up a gender-based violence femicide council. This was promised in 2019 and 2020. Those were empty promises. Today, there is no council currently in operation. Even though Domestic Violence and Sexual Offenses Act is meant to impose strict bail conditions, a former ANCMEC was released on a 20,000 rand bail on charges of allegedly raping his twin daughters. This is the kind of government you're presiding over. In September 2020, the gender-based violence and Femicide Command Center alone recorded more than 120 victims in the first three weeks of lockdown, 
while your Minister of Police was chasing alcohol and beach goers. Mr. President, if you were serious about ending gender-based violence and femicide, you would have announced that Gender-Based Violence and Femicide Council be set up immediately. Last year, I stood here and told you that Amahle Tabete from Springs has been missing since April 2019, and to this day she has not been found. But what makes matters worse is that Makosa Zane Singmobile Ndobu, who is 22 years of age from Sakile, went missing on the 12th of January 2021, and we later referred her case to the Office of the National Commissioner on the 25th of January for their intervention. Mr. Ramaphosa, when we follow up on the progress of the case, we are always told that SAPS has a new lead and they have applied yet for another Section 205. Your government is stalling. At this pace, it will take us forever as a country to find our missing women. The longer Makosa Zana remains missing, there are higher chances that we will not find her alive. And this is the government you're presiding over.